Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Maddie. I'm a reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. And in today's video, we are going to be sourcing and shipping together. So starting off with my thrift store haul, I do have a very small haul to show you guys. It has been a while since I had been to the thrift store and it felt good to be back. It was my thrift store's 99 cent day. So one of the five color tags is just 99 cents. And although I didn't find a lot, like I said, it was definitely good to be back and I did find some things for my own personal use. I did pay up for just a few items for resale, so let's go ahead and start with those items that I did pay up for. Truthfully, this is probably the most exciting piece that I found today. My dogs are always going crazy in the background, so my apologies for that if you can hear little feet. But I did pay $8.99 for this. Green tag was full price. The brand on this is called Needle and Thread, and this is new with tags, so new with tags. And then here's also the tag on the blouse. This is in a size small and this brand is known for making really intricate, really feminine, beautiful sequin and tool pieces. This piece is no exception. It is just gorgeous. I like did a double take whenever I saw it for just $9 at my thrift store because this brand retails for a lot, especially if you can find a dress. Now this is just a blouse and to be honest, there is definitely some missing beading that I need to like disclose and look through, but overall it's in really great shape and I am so excited to have found this brand and I get to now cross this brand off of my bolo list. I found it now feels good. I definitely do not always pay up for J. Crew, but I felt comfortable paying up for this piece. This is actually J. Crew Factory, which you can tell because of the two little diamonds, but this is a particular type of blazer that does really well. This is called the Schoolboy Blazer. I did pay $6 for this, which is definitely paying up for me. And I don't pay up for every single J. Crew blazer, but I had a good feeling with this because the pattern is just really timeless. It's a very nice plaid. It's that like hunter green, darker blue, very nice preppy academia look. It is a smaller size with it being a size zero, so it may take a little bit longer to resell, but overall I think it's going to do very well. This is an older style. It is from holiday of 2012, but it's in fantastic shape. Like I said, it is definitely a timeless style and this is also a wool blend. So I just know that those are all like keywords I'm definitely going to be able to use. I saw this blouse across the store. This is a brand called Let Me Be. This is an anthropology brand and I paid $4.99 for this. I recognize the just kind of drapery, the pleating on this and the tassels as something very special. And I immediately went up to it. I recognized it as anthropology and I was like, yes, $5 for this is definitely reasonable. This is in a size US 4 and I just think this is just a very pretty blouse. Now, moving on to the pieces that I got for just 99 cents. Anytime you see a blue tag, that indicates that it is 99 cents. So first up, we have a Banana Republic piece. This is a really nice shirt dress. This shirt dress is navy blue with like purple floral details throughout. It is a micro floral, and you can also call that a ditzy floral as your search word. This is a shirt dress. Shirt dress styles are always really in for people who have to do more of like an office career wear style. And I think that this is really great because it could also be dressed up or dressed down. You could pair it with the blade you can pair it with sandals just depending on the look that you're trying to give. Next up we have a J. Crew button down. This is in a size zero and it is a relaxed fit. I do like to pick up closet staples like polka dot shirts. Again another really great piece that you could dress up or dress down. You could wear this casually with some white jeans or you could tuck this into a pencil skirt and it's a great look for the office. So although these pieces are not exciting they're really great closet staples. People need them in their life and they are also really good bundle pieces. O'Neal is definitely a brand that I would only pick up for 99 cents. It is like a more bohemian surfer style brand. It's very similar to like Roxy or Billabong and I think this color is just beautiful. This mustard chartreuse color has been in for a while and I definitely think that there is a market for something like this. This is just one of those pieces that you can throw on really easily. You don't have to think about it. It'd be perfect for a summer day. 
Another polka dot blouse. This is by Banana Republic. This is in a size zero as well. And as I mentioned with the J. Crew blouse, any sort of polka dot, any sort of like timeless pattern, I definitely do pick up if it's just 99 cents, especially if it is just a mall brand. Mall brands don't ever really sell for a lot, but it does have notoriety. People are searching these brands out. And like I said, they're probably not going to pay much, maybe like $15 as a standalone piece, but they're really easy to list someone's going to be looking for it and i know for sure that it will sell i've sold a lot of polka dot blouses before from these mall brands old navy talbot banana republic j crew etc this next piece is more of a style based pickup this is a 99 cent fine. I've never heard of this brand before. It's called Frank Lyman, and this is in a size eight. I really picked this up because kimonos and open cardigans do very well for me. The pattern on this also reminded me of something that I would see from like Ted Baker. So it really did capture my attention, although I don't know the brand and I don't think it's anything of significance. Again, when you can find something that is pattern based, that is similar in style to a different brand, it's going to be a really good bundle piece. I definitely wouldn't recommend paying up for pieces whenever it's just style based, but for 99 cents, I think it is a good find or if you can find it at the bins. The next brand we have is Chico's. This is in a Chico size two. I believe that means it is a size large. I always have to look at the Chico size chart. This is just a really gauzy light blue cardigan. This is like a very nice pastel blue. I'm doing a writing activity with my first graders that I do small group with currently. And we have been talking about Easter because they were so excited that Easter just passed and they want to tell me all about their eggs. And we have started talking about pastels with them. So this definitely does remind me of a nice pastel Easter blue. Then we have a piece by Umji. This is just a very nice striped shirt. It is definitely a tunic length. This is in a size medium and MG is definitely a boutique brand. I will only pick up for 99 cents. I used to take this to my buy sell trade store and even then it was kind of hit or miss if they would purchase it from me or not but I am no longer selling things to my buy sell trade store. The economy has been hitting them as well and they have become very selective. So I have just found, unfortunately, it is just not really worth my time. I actually popped into both Play-Doh Closet and Uptown Cheapskate the other day to kind of shop for myself and then also for my resale business. And I found that they had nothing. Everything they had there was just very, cheap it was polyester it was those like online boutique brands that are just fast fashion and i found that to be very disheartening and unfortunately that is what is trendy but come on let's try and get in those better brands that have more sustainability Next up, we have an Old Navy piece. This is in a size medium. I love picking up Old Navy whenever it has a pattern or if it is just kind of cute. I also will always pick up any chambray pieces. This piece in particular is a floral piece. It's a really nice red color as well. I feel like red's just a very sought after color. It just kind of like makes you feel a little bit more bold. So I think this is a really great piece. Old Navy will normally sell for me on its own on eBay or people do like to bundle it on Poshmark. We have another Old Navy shirt. This is the classic shirt and this is in a plaid print. Plaid, again, is just something that people are seeking out. I do foresee this selling in a bundle most likely on Poshmark, but if not, it will probably sell for about $12 on eBay. That's kind of the going rate for Old Navy. But overall, I do have a pretty good sell through rate with Old Navy but it's just not going to sell for a lot. I'm a very fast lister, so selling things for a lower price point doesn't really bother me, especially because I am able to get so many pieces for just 99 cents, and I don't really find a lot of pieces worth paying up for. I definitely do not always pick up American Eagle, but this is just a nice, again, closet basic. This is a like gauzier white blouse. This is in a size small, but it is definitely oversized. It's going to be more of a tunic fit, and I definitely think that this will do well. Again, you're probably looking at $20 to $25 or it selling in a bundle, but these type of closet basic pieces, I know that people are always seeking out. They're always looking to replace, especially when you go for a white piece. A lot of people do sweat through their white pieces, so unfortunately, 
that creates pit stains and then they do have to replace these pieces throughout their years. This is another brand I seldom pick up. This is called Chelsea and Violet. This is in a size extra small and this is a Macy's brand. They make a lot of very bohemian pieces and I decided to pick up this dress for 99 cents because I really like the navy blue style. The silhouette of it being kind of a baby doll style with like a more flared sleeve it reminded me of something that free people would make. So I figured that there was enough style points for it to sell. Lauren Ralph Lauren is one of my favorite brands to pick up for 99 cents. This is in a size US 4 and this is a really nice ruche career wear work wear dress. The ruching is just definitely going to be very flattering, especially around your stomach area. And I know that people really do seek out this style of dress, not necessarily this print. The print is not my favorite, but I know that the style with the ruching to kind of hide any of your curves that you don't want to show off, it is definitely more popular. Columbia is a brand I will pretty much always pick up for 99 cents. This is in a size medium. This is a really nice plaid button down. Columbia is a brand that I typically will sell on eBay. And again, it's probably only going to sell anywhere from 15 to $20, but it's just a very fast mover for me, despite it not retelling or reselling for much. I have never heard of this brand before, and I definitely don't think it is anything special, especially because it does say made in China. But what really stuck out to me was the heart print on there. Any sort of novelty print I do think has sellability. Um, a lot of people are very into heart prints, especially around Valentine's Day or heart prints all the time. One of the little kindergartners in my group today, she was wearing hearts head to toe, and I said, I love your hearts today. And she said, it's not Valentine's, but I wore it anyway. And I was like, you can wear hearts all year long, girl. So that is definitely why I picked this up. I also really like the ruffle on it as well. Again, just a nice bundle piece. Their old navy piece. This is in a size small petite, again with the polka dots. I can't say it enough, stripes, polka dots, plaid. Those are pieces that people are always wanting to have in their closet. It's just, it's very timeless type of pattern and this is in like a tent style dress so it is going to be pretty shapeless it's a t-shirt style people can pull it on and they don't really have to think about it it's like that dress that you had an outfit originally planned and for whatever reason that outfit didn't work out it looked better in your head and you're like oh no i'm running behind and you need to pull something on this style of dress is going to be something that your mind instantly goes to you feel comfortable in it you feel safe and you know that it'll look perfectly fine it's not necessarily like a standout piece that you're going to get a million compliments on but you feel good in it. H&M is most certainly a brand I do not always pick up but I did pick this up because it is linen and it is also a sunflower print. I know a lot of people their favorite flower is sunflower. This is just a very bright airy dress. It is something that is going to be perfect for the spring and summertime. In the springtime you can put like a little lightweight cardigan over it. In the summertime you can wear it just like as is with a pair of sandals and you are good to go. Again, I'm not expecting much for it. I'm probably going to start it at 25 and expect offers from 15 to 20. And the last piece I have for resale is yet another polka dot piece. The brand on this is Express. And again, this is just like a jersey style polka dot dress. It is in a black and white color scheme. So just very timeless, very easy. Don't have to think about it. Same thing I said with all the other polka dot pieces. Moving on to some of the pieces that I got for my own personal use. Anything I don't like whenever I try it on, I just go ahead and resell it. I am kind of picky about how things fit on me, but I have been trying to get some more career wear pieces as I am going back to teaching in August. I did kind of do a closet clean out when I had decided I didn't want to go back to teaching and now I am trying to rebuild my closet. Fortunately, I had some sort of hindsight and I didn't get rid of every single career wear piece that I had or anything, but I definitely did get rid of some of the dresses and some of the pieces that I just wasn't in love with the way that they fit on me. So I am rebuilding my career wear closet. I am like in desperate need of good work pants. I do not like dress pants, but Sometimes I like to wear a cute blouse and I can't wear jeans every day. So that's definitely something I'm on the hunt for is a good pair of dress pants. I have about two pairs of dress pants right now and 
that's just not gonna cut it when it gets cold outside. So I have an Ann Taylor piece here. I really do love Ann Taylor and Loft as well for my own career wear pieces. This is just a really nice basic black blouse, but what makes it kind of unique is it does have Swiss polka dots on these sleeves, and I just think that this is going to be a really great closet staple for me. As I just mentioned, I really do like loft for my own personal closet and especially for career wear, more professional pieces. So I really enjoy the pattern on this dress. It reminds me a lot of something that I would see by the higher end brand Celia B, but just because it's like so fun, it's so whimsical. It is a shift style dress, but I definitely foresee myself using a belt to belt it and kind of cinch in at the waist. This piece is definitely one that I'm going to use in like my personal life, not my professional life because it is a little bit tighter. The brand on this is Gianni Bini and I picked this up because I really liked the ruching. It just sits really nicely and I love this blue color. I just think this is really feminine, really girly and I think what is really nice about this dress is that you could dress it up with heels or you could dress it down with like a pair of Miller sandals. The brand on this is Trixie. I think that is just like a lower end boot boutique brand and I really picked this up because I love a good Swiss polka dot myself. This is also in a really nice like magenta pink color. It's also long sleeves. I am someone who is always perpetually cold in especially when there's like central AC going on and so long sleeves for me it's always a good choice pretty much. So I am definitely excited to see how this one looks on. And then as I have mentioned earlier and in my other videos, I am going back to a classroom in the fall. I am going to be teaching first grade. So I am in the process of picking out some books for my classroom library. I still have a lot of books from when I taught previously for my own personal use, like for the read alouds with the kids that I don't necessarily want the kids handling because they are just nicer books. I want to keep them in pretty good pristine condition because I plan on using those for years and years in my teaching, but I do need to rebuild my classroom library, the books that the kids get to handle that they get to put in their book bag. So I'm just trying to get some like floppier books that it's okay if the corners, you know, get folded. It's no big deal. I am definitely not a dictator style teacher. I would not get mad if they accidentally ruined a book or if it got ripped. If they did it carelessly, like we would have a talk, but accidents happen. I will not be upset if these books don't make it more than a year or two. So first up, we have a Captain Underpants book. I did pay 99 cents for all of these books. And that is definitely a tip if you are a teacher or you're trying to get books for your own kids. Definitely check out the thrift store or your library sales. So Captain Underpants, that's just a timeless one. And because it is first grade, there's a lot of illustrations throughout. So I know that they are definitely going to be engaged with that. Having been a school librarian as well, really a bonus of that is I know where the kids should be academically in their reading. And I also know the type of books that they are interested in. I had a lot of circulation data and Captain Underpants, Dave Pilkey, he's a favorite. This is another favorite series. I always sold these at the Scholastic Book Fair. This is the Magic Puppy series. Again, just really cute, just an early chapter book. Like look how big the font is. There's illustrations throughout. So it's a really nice one. And then this one will probably go in my teacher stash. This is the Cat in the Hat Comes Back. I know I have the first Cat in the Hat, but I'm pretty sure I don't have this one. If it turns out I do have this one, I'll just put it in the library for the students. And then a personal book for myself. This is definitely not going in the classroom. This is for me. I'm an avid reader. My Goodreads is always linked down below if you guys ever wanna follow me over there. And that is Killer of the Flower Moon. This is about the Osage murders and the birth of the FBI. This is by David Grant, and this is nonfiction. I did already see the movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio, and I enjoyed it. So definitely interested in learning more about this and the injustices that they did to the Osage tribe. If you guys haven't seen the movie or read the book, I definitely do recommend. And then looking at some pieces that I passed on, up first we have a Patagonia dress. I've never really had luck with Patagonia dresses. Patagonia, as you guys know, is more so known for outerwear. So these style of dresses just don't do very well. And my thrift store wanted basically $20 for this. It's not crazy. 
Another piece that I passed on was a Madewell maxi dress. This was actually from fall of 2021. It was a really nice black maxi dress and out of floral print. And I thought it was cute personally, but Madewell, pretty much nothing sells by Madewell anymore for a decent amount. So to pay $13 for it is just not something I felt comfortable doing, despite it being a newish style. Then we had a Kate Spade dress. They wanted $35 for this. So immediately no, Kate Spade has really gone down in resale value. This was a cute floral print, but it definitely did have some outdated components such as the cold shoulder flutter sleeve. Then I found a new to me brand and I stopped to look it up because it had a rectangular style tag and it was in all capital letters which can sometimes be an indicator that something is higher end, that it is quality. But when I looked up this brand, I think it's called Lace Coyotes de Paris. I just found that comps were really all over the place. I didn't really see it veering towards a positive comps. Occasionally you see like the comps in 50 to $60, but it seemed like more so a lot of the pieces were in the 20 to $30 range and they wanted $13 for this. So I definitely did not feel comfortable paying that. I used to really like selling Zara shoes. I definitely preferred Zara shoes over Zara clothing and loafers that are trendy like this. I used to pick up, they wanted, they wanted $15 for these, which is just outrageous. Although I did think that they were cute and on trend. These were also in a smaller size, a size 36. So I definitely left these behind. And in general, I will say that Zara shoes are not selling as quickly as they used to. I also found another Kate Spade dress. They wanted $30 for this dress. This is an older Kate Spade tag. And this was just a very plain black dress. Nothing to this was very special. It's not anything that I could justify paying up for. I found quite a few pairs of Chacos in varying conditions, most of them poor conditions. This was actually a better pair that I saw and Chacos for me have been very hit or miss. I don't think they're as trendy as they were like three to four years ago. My thrift store wanted anywhere from $15 to $30 per pair, so I definitely left them behind. I considered getting this J. Crew blazer. It was a nice black blazer. It was new with partial tag, like the tag had been ripped. It was in a nice black color, but it was also a smaller size. They wanted $10 for this, and I really sat there and thought about it, but I ended up leaving it behind because I have had some J. Crew blazers sit recently. I didn't think it was quite as special as the other J. Crew blazer that I got for $6. So I might regret that one. Would you guys have picked that up for $10? And we have this old tag Tory Birch blouse. They wanted $20 for this. I thought it was a pretty pattern, a pretty print, especially with it having the metallic threading, but Tory Birch clothing just doesn't do very well for me. I have a dress currently in my closet that is new with tags that has been sitting for, I wanna say about a year now. Then I pretty much like thought I was in the twilight zone when I saw this pricing. This is a Gymshark cropped sweatshirt it it took me a minute to read the cursive writing on it because it's just such a bad font I ended up deducing that it says be a visionary but it took me like a lot of squinting they wanted $20 for this Gymshark in general just doesn't even really resell for that much anymore so I definitely did leave that behind and then the last piece that I left behind that was just very overpriced was this Harley Davidson shirt. Harley shirts haven't done well for me pretty much since 2019, 2020. They used to be like a quick 25 to $35 depending on the graphic and the size. And now it's more like the $15 range. But despite that, the thrift store still does price up Harley. So they wanted $17 for the shirt. It was an okay graphic, but $17, no thank you. Moving on to everything that has sold for me. These sales are from last night and this morning slash afternoon. So about an 18 hour time frame. Let's talk about Poshmark sales first. The first item to sell on Poshmark is a Talbot blazer. This is a black blazer. It was in a size 14. This is something that I believe I only paid 99 cents for. Again, blazers haven't been doing as well for me as they used to. This is also kind of a crop style blazer and I think crop style blazers are out. It reminds me of, this is a niche reference. It reminds me of a Degrassi scene where, where I believe it's Paige and Hazel, maybe Paige and Alex, they're in like the dressing room and one of the girls says to the other like, 
that crop blazer is a little too cropped on you. Hazel, this shrunken blazer, it so has your name on it. I think it might be a little too shrunken for Hazel's body type. I got this in December of 2023, so it did take about four months to resell. The next piece to sell, I was a little bit disappointed with the selling price. The brand on this is Gal Meets Glam. This can be a very good, very lucrative brand, but you have to find the right style. This brand is actually discontinued. It's no longer made, so some of the pieces are very rare. Some of the pieces have been sold at Anthropology, and those pieces are typically the pieces from the earlier collections of this brand. I think this brand was only around for like two or three years and it began to veer into like a bargain brand territory. So they went ahead and shut the brand down. And this piece in particular, it just wasn't the best piece. It was just a lace dress. It's not anything super special. The print on it, like I said, was just lace. So you could probably find this from a lot of different brands, therefore, wasn't a lot to it. It was in a size 10, so a great mid-size, and it did end up selling for $26. I listed this in January of 2024, so it didn't take too terribly long to resell, but I do know that I did pay up for this, and I just expected more because of the brand. And my last Poshmark sale is something I've had since September of 2023, so this did take a while to resell. The brand on this is Talbot's again. This is a seashell skirt, and I think this is just like the perfect time to pick this up. This would be just so great to wear on vacation. This is in a size six, and this sold for $24. This is something that I picked up for 99 cents. Moving on to eBay, I have two for sure eBay sales and then I have one pending sale. It is so annoying on eBay that people do not have to pay immediately. I know you can change your settings so they do have to pay immediately, but I've heard that that doesn't really resolve anything and people still kind of like skirt around the issue. So let's talk about the two sales that I have for sure. I will update you if the other one has gone through or not, like on the side. For sure, an item that has sold is this Vince Silk Color Block shirt. I got this for $0.99 cents in February of this year, so it's only been about a month, month and a half since I got it. This only did sell for $15, but that's honestly what I expected. Vince doesn't really sell for much anymore unless you can find a nice leather or wool piece. So with this being a silk color block blouse, $15 seemed very reasonable, especially considering I only paid $0.99. Cents. The next item that sold was something that I sourced in January of this year, so it did take a few months to resell, and honestly, I wanted it to sell for a little bit more. This is a Bowden patchwork skirt. It was like to your knee length, and I really like this because it gave me like strong Phoebe Buffet from Friends vibes, but it was an old tag Bowden. I think it took a certain type of buyer, so $19 is what it ended up selling for. And the last item on eBay that I am waiting for payment on, hopefully I will update you guys that I received the payment. This is something that I got in February of this year. This is a new Tag City Chic black maxi dress. The style on this is the treasure dress. And anytime I can find a formal wear City Chic dress, especially when it's new Tags, I do pick it up and sometimes I will even pay up for it. I believe I paid about eight dollars for this and it ended up selling for 39 dollars after just a few months we are going into wedding season so people are shopping for wedding guest dresses and then i do have one mercari sale it is nothing to cheer about or get excited for especially when you consider that anytime you cash out on mercari now they have changed the policy so when you cash out they automatically charge you a two dollar cash out fee let me know your thoughts on that this item was one I just really wanted to get rid of. This is a new tag Anthropology Holding Horses shirt, and this is just a very outdated style. I paid 99 cents for this, but in retrospect, I probably just shouldn't have picked it up. It is a linen blend, but it's like asymmetrical. One shoulder is like a tank top strap, and then the other shoulder is like ruched and on there, so it's just not really the vibes for 2024 and this only ended up selling for $10. It's 
that is everything that I sourced and everything that I shipped for this day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know how your sales are doing in the comments down below. Let me know what you have been sourcing recently. What is the most exciting thing that you have found? And if you did enjoy this video, please do make sure that you give it a thumbs up and you hit the subscribe button. I will see you guys next video. Bye.